I'd like to say good morning and thank everyone for being here this morning. I, come, I hope you come looking for a blessing this morning. Um, the Lord has gave you the opportunity to, to come and enjoy the service. Lord, we, uh, we just want you to be in the midst as we go throughout this service. Uh, we want you to also get engaged with us. Uh, we're going to get it started off first with the girls. They're going to come around and they're going to sing this first time. Listen to the word. Some people that we love dearly who have been asking for the last couple weeks for a couple songs, we're going to break them up so that you don't have a Just Us show. We want you to sing too. But during these very trying times, um, I know I had a relative that was taken to the ER this morning. We've got a lot to give to the Lord, and I think as a Christian, that is the biggest thing you have to learn is to hand it to Him and not keep carrying it with you. We pray this is a blessing to you. you. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice and the same old lies. If you try to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better a better life if you got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost he's a way maker if you need freedom with saving he's a prison shaking savior if you got chains he's a chain breaker Say that now. So yes, this morning yes. I say this that uh, uh, 
this world is just uh, is just gone in a direction, and that's very discouraging. But it's very encouraging this morning that we're that much closer to home. Yeah. And so uh, that's what we're going to praise and worship the Lord for this morning. We're on our, we're on the journey. We're just passing through here, yeah. and we're going to be leaving here for long. So let's pray this morning, Father. We just want to thank you, Lord, for your yeah. house this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we can come and. We can leave the world outside those doors out there, and we know it'll be waiting on us. But this time, we, Lord, our minds and hearts will be on you. Just thanking you, Lord, for every step that you've directed us this week, for watching over us, for being with us. And we just want to praise you for that this morning. That's what our songs and our preaching will be about this morning, be praising your name. So, Lord, I pray for each folk, each person that's here this morning, those that are watching. I pray you just meet their need, whatever they're dealing with. I pray, Lord, that you would just manifest yourself to them. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to ask everyone to stand and help us sing this song. I shall not be moved.
Oh, yes, I'm ready to go. I like to see, I like to stay a little longer. I like to stay a lot more longer on the same. But you know, today is a day of salvation. That's right. And us as Christians, we've got to be out there on the fire line, taking care of business, That's right. telling people that heaven is real. Yeah. And that if they're not saved, they need to give their life to the Lord Jesus. Amen.
you'll turn this morning to Revelation chapter 21, Revelation chapter 21, and we'll begin reading in verse 9. Revelation chapter 21, we're reading in verse 9. So thank you again for being here this morning, and I hope you've had a good week this week. And I, I want to say this, and I, you know, uh, uh, I, I think I've turned into a different person uh, just because of the way things are in the world. But my job is really not here to tell you everything's going to be okay in this world. But my job is to get to, to prepare you That's or right. to encourage you to get prepared for the next life. Amen. And it's certainly going to be uh, better. So, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, as I said, I think last week, we're Noah. We're preaching about a, a flood, about a, a, an event that's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, it depends on whether what decision you've made. Have you made a decision to get on the ark, or, or have you not made that decision? So that's our job, as, as sort of as Terry was alluding to there. It's uh, that's our job is to tell people. Come so, on. so uh, this morning we're talking about heaven again. I told you we was going to try to squeeze three sermons out of heaven, <laughs> and I told you it's going to be a challenge because there's not that much information in the Bible about heaven when you really look at it. And uh, I guess uh, maybe the Lord knew we'd want to go there uh, really bad if we knew everything about heaven. So this morning we're going to talk again about heaven. If you'll stand with me this morning, I, uh, I, I try to be aware of time because I know you're very uncomfortable in your mask. And, and so, uh, so I, but, uh, but we're going to do what we're going to do, right? So Amen. notice what the Bible says in verse 9. And uh, the Bible says in, in chapter 21, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me. If you remember uh, when we were talking about tribulation, we talked about the angels. You know, it was the angels that brought the, uh, that, that was John was dealing with when he was seeing all these things. And he says, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. You know who that is, don't you? Amen. That's us. Amen. That's the church, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and that, that is also, well, I'll talk about that in just a second. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem. I'm sorry, you can't deny it. It's Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was likened to a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates, and at the gates... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates and on the north three gates and on the south three gates and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations in them the names of the 12 apostles of the yeah. Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gate thereof and the walls there the wall thereof and the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with the reed twelve thousand furlongs the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal and he measured the wall thereof a hundred and forty and four cubits according to the measure of a man this is of the angel and the building of the wall of it was of jasper and the city was pure gold like into clear glass and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third, uh, I'm going to have a problem with these names, Chalcedony, Sidoni, the fourth, an emerald, the fifth, a sardix, the, the sixth, sardius, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, cryosopris, the eleventh, adjacent, the twelfth, and emerus. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every single, every, I'm sorry, every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb were the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb hey, is the light thereof. Hey, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And all the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there, there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for a place. And I pray, Lord, you'd make it real to us this morning in our hearts and minds. I pray you'd just speak to our hearts that uh, 
Now, Lord, just uh, that we would appreciate what you are doing and what you have done for us. So I pray, Lord, for the ones that don't know if they have eternal life, the ones that do not believe in an afterlife. I pray you'd use this scripture this morning, and I pray you'd use something just to speak to their hearts. So I pray, Lord, you'd minister to us, even though uh, uh, I trust that most of these folks are on their way to heaven. I know we still have issues and problems in our lives. So I pray you'd use this scripture this morning to minister to us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. This morning we're talking about heaven. If you remember last week we were talking about uh, the citizens of heaven and we talked about the people who will, who will be there in heaven and uh, I, I, I talked a little bit about uh, uh, we, we described the, the, the people there and I'm gonna, I, I, I said this and I, I want to stay on it just a second. Who, who's going to be in heaven? And uh, uh, I said this, that it's going to be people who have put their trust in Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, uh, Jesus says this, that uh, uh, no man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. And so there's only one way to heaven, and that is to believe in, uh, to, to, uh, to, to believe in Jesus Christ, to follow him. So yeah. it's only going to be people who have put their trust in Jesus Christ that will be in heaven. Amen. It's not going to be a place that I've partied my life away and now it's time to go rest. I don't know how many funerals I've done and how many times I've heard Vince Gill sing, Go Rest High on That Mountain. And I think sometimes I think, boy, I hope that's the truth. Because we, we said last week, sometimes that's not the truth. Just because we say, may you rest in peace, or, uh, or he or she is in a better place, that does not mean that that is the truth. Amen. And, and so in heaven, we'll be full of people who have put their trust and put their faith in Amen. Jesus Christ. And also, as we read it there a little bit, uh, it's, it's going to be a place of truth. Did you know that? It's going to be a place of truth. Who's going to be in heaven? It's going to be people who have put their faith in Jesus Christ. How do you know who you are this morning? Well, I want you to look at this scripture, and I hope we've got this up in 1 John chapter 5. And uh, there's, a, there's a scripture here that I want you to look at. And uh, let me tell you who's going to be in heaven. People in heaven will be people who have the love of God in their heart. Because people are going to say, you know, and, and I've asked a lot of people this. If you were to die today, do you know where you would spend eternity? And people say, uh, no, I don't. And then I would say, well, you know, you have to put your faith, you have to ask Jesus Christ to come to your heart. Oh, I've done that. It's almost like it's just sort of a, uh, a thing that you do and you automatically get to heaven. But that's not the case. The case is simply this, is when you accept Jesus into your heart, there is a work that begins to take place and there is a change over Amen. your lifetime. Now, obviously, when you've first been saved, you're not going to have some of the things that you will as you get older. And I know in my own life, I've certainly changed. There's been things, and that's why, uh, you know, we have, to, uh, we have to be able to forgive. And I want you to notice what this scripture says. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So we've already said that. People in heaven will be people who believe in Jesus Christ. And everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. It's simply saying this. The one who begot Jesus is God. Yeah, everybody believes in God this morning, don't they? I mean, you ask yeah. everybody. Yeah, there's a God. But believing in God is believing in Jesus Christ. Yeah, now, right. the second verse is this. And this gets a little bit more. Notice what this is. But this, by, by this, by this this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God. So let me tell you who's going to be in heaven. People in heaven will be people who have the love of God in their heart. I know I beat you over the head for this, but I'm going to say it again. Is this. We have a cause and our cause is in this book and the cause is Jesus Christ and it's getting people to heaven. I want to tell you, you cannot, and I know, I know, you get tired of hearing it, you cannot jump on a political cause right now or a social issue because there's going to be an element of, of every cause in this world that you're not going to be able to go with. It, it, it's going to be like this. It's going to be like wearing a shoe that don't fit. You say, well, I'm, I'm for this. I'm for this. Yeah, but, but I'm not for that. But you can't. You can't engage in that cause if you can't. Does everybody understand? Uh, you know, whether it be a political candidate or social justice or whatever. Listen, God has already covered it all. Amen. God says yeah. this. God says this. Uh, God says that you are to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right. He did not say it mattered what color they were or what, what race they were or right. any of those things. God has already covered in his word the way we are supposed to treat our neighbors. Amen. Now, what we have today is we have a society trying to achieve that without the love of God. We've taken God and taken him out of our country, yeah. out of the world. I mean, we, you know, you can't force that on me. No. But there's only one way to love. And the way you know if you're going to heaven is, is if you love the children of God. 
Notice what comes first. It didn't say that you love God. But it says when you love the children of God, then we know that you love God. I mean, that's what the verse says, isn't it? Not? And, and, and so what we see is society saying, you know, we're, we're going to legislate that you love this person or that. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. I'm telling you, it's a dead end street. Don't jump on those social issues. We have a cause, and the cause is Jesus Christ yeah, right. to, trying to get people to go to heaven with us. Yeah. And, and I like this story. I, I mean, uh, the story is of Moses. And the children of Israel are about to go to, uh, they're about to leave Egypt, and they're headed for the promised land. Well, Moses' father-in-law wasn't even going to go with them. And so finally Moses says, look, why don't you just go with it? You know the lay of the land. You know where we're going, everything. You're going to be a big asset to us. And so what we learn is, is this. He was, what he was doing, he was witnessing to his father-in-law. Mm -hmm. Because what the Bible tells us, and when we get to the book of Judges, guess who was there in the promised land? His father, I think his name was Hobad. And, and so, so that is our cause. You know, David went to the forefront of the fight with, with uh, 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 the Philistine giant. What was yeah. his name? Goliath. Thank you, Goliath. <laughs> and, and people were just sitting around, and they were doing this, and they were doing that. And David asked a question. David said this. David says, is there not a cause? Yeah. And, and I would say that this morning is, is the church, is there not a cause? No, it's not social justice. It's not uh, presidential candidates because there's not going to be an election in heaven. Amen. Because there's only going to be one king, and you know who that is. Praise and by the way, I've already said, there's only one person for president of the United States. His name is Jesus. Praise That's the only Amen. person. Yeah. And, and we've said this every week. There's only one way there's going to be peace. And that is when the Prince of Peace takes his Amen. throne. Amen. And, and so, so this morning, let me just hit you with that again. It's simply this. is Listen, we have a cause this morning. Our cause is to take people to heaven. Now, last week we saw the citizens of heaven. The citizens of heaven will be people who have put their faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. They will be people who have the love of God in their heart. If you can stand in, in the face of somebody, I don't care what color or what, what position they are or whatever, if you can stand and look somebody in the face and spew your hate in, toward them, you're probably not going to heaven. Amen. Nobody hear that. If you can't love people, regardless of what they look like or, or where they come from, then you're probably not going to be at the place that we're talking about today. Well, that's pretty crude, is it not? So we see who's going to be in heaven. People who believe in Jesus Christ. People who have the love of God in their heart. Amen. It's a struggle, is it not? Yeah. There's some people this morning I'd probably like to spew my head out at. And, and, and my blood boils because I'm in, we're both, we have that flesh. But my heart won't let me. Because I have God, I have Jesus Christ in my heart. Yeah. And so I, God, God just won't, won't allow me to do that. So last week we talked about this. There are people who are not going to heaven. And we read a story in the book of Luke about that. His name was the rich man. And we know, we, we read about that, how he, 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 he had a, a guy named Lazarus that laid at his door just to get his leftovers. And, and, uh, and so one day they both died, and we talked a little bit about how that rich man, he thought, he remembered. So uh, people who go to heaven or hell are going to remember. We said that might be the worst torment. Well, probably not physically, but mentally they'll be tormented in remembering the times that people come to you and said, hey, you know, you ever accepted Jesus as your Savior? And, and people are going to remember that because in that story, that rich man remembered Lazarus. He remembered yeah. him specifically. But then we had Lazarus, and the Bible says this, both of them opened up their eyes. Yeah. In other words, when we die, you're going somewhere. Yeah. There is there is eternal life for yeah. everybody. Amen. But you're going to either heaven or hell. But the rich, I'm sorry, the Lazarus woke up in a place called Abraham's bosom. Yeah. And it was a place of paradise. But I want to say this, and I don't understand it all. And you, you, I don't think anybody does. We really don't understand paradise from heaven. Because we're going to talk about a new heaven and, and a new earth in yeah. our scripture uh, th this morning. So uh, heaven in the New Testament is described as, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 46, it's described as a country. It speaks of its vastness, and I'll talk about that. It talks about it being a city. It has many inhabitants or has many people. Uh, it is uh, described in uh, Matthew as a kingdom. Yeah. It's an emphasis on its orderliness. In other words, God is a God of order. And heaven will be a place and be a kingdom. Uh, the Bible also talks about it being a paradise. You remember when Jesus looked at the thief on the cross. Yep. And he said, today you shall join me in 
paradise. So it's also described as paradise. Notice what the Bible says here in John chapter 14. It'll be up on the screen. I want you to notice John chapter 14, uh, verses 1 and 2. Now, we're talking about uh, uh, going to heaven, right? Yeah. And, and this is before Jesus. He's getting ready to go to the cross in John chapter 14. I mean, so this is, he is telling us what he is getting ready uh, to, to happen to him after his resurrection, right? Uh, or, or, when, or, I'm sorry, his ascension. And he says this, don't be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't, don't be upset. And, and believe me, believe in God, believe also in me. I'm telling you something. I'm telling you the truth. Verse 2 says this, in my Father's house are many mansions. Amen. Now this is, we learned something about that. And, and he goes on to say, Believe in me, believe in my Father, believe in me. If it, if it were not so, I would have told you. In other words, I'm telling you the absolute truth about this place. But there's a couple of things we learn in the scripture about heaven. The first one is this. It's in my Father's house. So who lives there? God, God does. Because he says it's in my Father's house. So from that, we know that God lives there. And in his house are many mansions. Now, I know what we, I don't know what our image is of heaven, and I guess we could, I think David Jeremiah did this years ago, is he did a, a study on heaven, and he made a brochure, and that's what I think about when I'm reading as we go through this place called heaven. Let's take a deep breath, okay? Because we're getting ready to go to heaven. Yeah. So let's, get, let's take a deep breath and think about this. It's a real place. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Jesus says it's a real place. And we said this last week. There's people there. Mm -hmm. We have loved ones there. I said I said something last week I sort of regretted because I said when we get there and we see our loved ones, we're going to say, hey, what's the deal? Why did, you know? But listen, it wasn't them. It was God called them home, right? Yeah. So we, we, I don't know that we can ask that question, but, but our people are there. Mm -hmm. They're already in this place called Abraham's bosom. They're already in paradise. Yeah. Can we think about that for just a second? Wow. You know what's wonderful is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible says, uh, uh, talks about the dead in Christ shall ride first, and then, we, and then we shall meet them in there. And so shall, listen to this verse, listen to this phrase. And so shall we ever mm -hmm. be with the Lord. Listen, Amen. so shall we. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Ain't that a great, ain't that a great thought? And, and so, so the scripture this morning tells us, first of all, God lives there. It's in my Father's house. Now, the Greek word for mansions is actually dwelling places. In heaven, when we get there, we're going to have a place to live. Yeah. Okay? And I'll give you the size of it in just a minute. We'll go ahead and write the deeds out if you want to. Yeah. All right? <clears throat> Heaven's a real place. First thing is this. I want you to notice in verses 9 through 14 uh, 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 is the city itself. Now, let me, let me hit on that mansion, a dwelling place. It said that uh, uh, when an Israelite son got married, the father would add a wing onto the house. And, uh, and so, and, and it reminds me of when we go to Guatemala, because in Guatemala, there's a, the, the whole family, I mean, the cousins and everybody live in the same house. And basically what they do, they have a house built here, and they have like a garage in the middle, and they build off of that. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and so, so Jewish culture says that maybe that's what this is, but it's a big one. Okay? Yeah. In other words, we're all going to live together. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's going to be built around our Father's house. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thought, is it not? So the city itself, the characteristics of this city, follows the same patterns of cities that uh, John was familiar with. It has a foundation. It speaks of permanence. Heaven's going to be for eternity, right? Amen. Uh, which is different than the tents that pilgrims and strangers lived in. You've heard that said. Uh, we're li these are tents, right? We live in tents. We're getting ready to move into a mansion. The walls and gates speaks of protection, as God's people will never have to worry about the enemy or a thief. Now, look, notice this in verse 12. Notice what there's going to be there. I got bad news for some people this morning. Come on. And it had a wall great and high and had 12 gates, and at the gates, 12 angels and names written on, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Let me tell you something. The nation of Israel is eternal. Do you get that? It's not only is, listen, they can attack, they can do anything they want to, but the Jewish nation will also be in heaven yeah. because the names of the 12 tribes will be right here on the, on the gates of heaven. 
So every day when we walk by, we're going to see those names of the 12 tribes of Israel. I heard this this week. Shame on you churches that are preaching replacement theology. It's not going to be replaced no. because it's eternal. Amen. The nation Amen. of Israel is eternal. Amen. Now, I read this week that uh, uh, someone was say, talking about uh, G Jesus being how racist it was that he is white or people claim he is white. I got bad news for you. Jesus is not white no. and Jesus is not black no. and Jesus is not Asian. He is Jewish. Amen. He comes from a Jewish nation. And the Jewish nation will be and is eternal. It will be here forever. You yeah. already got that. Do you all hear that out there? Okay. There is no such thing as replacement theology. You're not going to replace the nation of Israel. I just love that. Now notice what the Bible says. Romans chapter 11. Don't you notice this? Because for whatever reason, we are trying to get rid of the nation of Israel. I know why. Because if we get rid of the nation of Israel, we get rid of Jesus. And if we get rid of Jesus, then I'm not a sinner that he went to the cross and paid for my sin. You got that? I mean, yeah. we get rid of all that, then I am me. And, and so, but notice what the Bible says. Here's what's happening today. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thereof. I'm sorry, but the root did. Now, verse 19. Thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Here's what happened. I've got, listen, the people in heaven will be people with humility. If you don't know today that you're a sinner, you are lost, you're on your way to hell, then you're not going to heaven. Amen. Because there has to be a time in your life when you realize you're lost. Yeah. There also has to be some humility to know that you weren't the first. The Jewish people were the first. Yeah. You got that? Yeah. And this is what the scripture is saying is we were grafted in. We were grafted in to the nation of Israel, to the Jewish people. Yeah. They were the first. We were the second. Can you handle that? Or does yeah. it sort of choke going down? You mean, I, I like this story. In uh, Matthew chapter 15, uh, there was a woman. She was a Gentile woman. And uh, she was standing on the roadside and she waited for Jesus. And, uh, and, and when Jesus come by, she says... Uh, 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 thou son of David, have mercy yeah. on me. Now remember, she's a Gentile. Mm -hmm. And it was really, to say thou son of David was a Jewish statement. That's what they said, right? The son of David. And, and, and so Jesus gets into this conversation with her. And, uh, and, and, and he says this. He, uh, uh, he, he says something that is shocking. He says, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the Bible says this, that she worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. What she did was she humbled herself. Yeah. And she said, she began to, 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 worship, to, to worship Jesus. And Jesus said, listen to what he says. He said, it's not meat or it's not right to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Now, you talk about humility. Yeah. And she could have said, I don't appreciate that. Or she could say what she did. And she said this. She said, yes, but even the dogs eat the leftovers. Yeah. And what Jesus says, ma'am, you are a woman of great faith. Yeah. And let me tell you, we as Gentiles better have some, if you're going to heaven, you better have some humility. Yeah. Because it's the tribe, 12 tribes of Israel's names that's going to be on the gates of heaven. Now, another thing is this. Notice what that verse says. If you'll put that one back at verse 19. This is what we say. Well, you know, I mean, we, we try to find fault. With, Jew, with the Jewish people, right? Because we're going to say, you know, yeah, we're grafted, but the branches were broken off. Yeah. I mean, God didn't have another ch choice, right? I mean, he had to graft us in. Yeah. No, he didn't have to. He didn't have to. Hey, be, be, so, so, but, but you're talking about prophetic. The branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. That, I mean, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 11, that's what we're going to say. Where are we saying it? So we're going to remember and we're going to be thankful every time we enter into those gates. Well, thank you for grafting us in. So the second thing, I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse 14. If you're going to heaven, you better get used to the fact that we were second. Yeah. The Jewish people were first. Everybody got it? Yeah. And they're going to be eternal. Yeah. The second thing is in verse 14. Notice what it says. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations and them the names of the 12 apostles of the, of the Lamb. Listen to this. The 12 apostles were the founders of the local church. Yeah. The local church is eternal. Yeah. 
you Amen. do. This church is not the only. We're not talking about a church. We're talking about the church of Jesus Christ. How many people say this? I just, I just don't like church. I got hurt down there. Well, join the club. Come on. But let me tell you something. It ain't going anywhere. Because in heaven, you're going to see the names of the 12 apostles that founded the church. So if you are not into corporate worship, you need to, you need to reassess, are you going to heaven? Because it's always going to be there. Is everybody good with that? Boy, this is really good this morning. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so this is the characteristics of heaven. The first thing we, we see is this. It is the, the, the city itself. Now, I, do you not like that where it says the church is called the bride? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because God thinks it's beautiful. Hey, are we perfect? No. I don't think so. But you know what? God still thinks we're beautiful. Yes. Right? And Jesus, we're, we're his bride. Yes. Amen. Okay? If it happened to you in church, you better get over it. Amen. Because the church is not going anywhere. It's eternal. And God loves it. The, church, the city itself. The second thing is this. The size of this city. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Heaven is big. Verses 15 through 17. And he talked with me in a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And, and, and I'm going to hurry up here and just say this. that The, the city measures 1,500 square miles, but it's a cube. And I'm not a mathematician. Maybe some of you find Listen to this. It's 1,500 square. It's 1,500 miles squared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do the math. It's not 1,500 times 1,500. No. It's 1,500 squared. Mm -hmm. Everybody got that? Yeah. That's somewhere around 3 billion square miles. Which means this. They say that 90% of the population in the world is living right now. And there's about 5 point something billion people in the world. Maybe, six, maybe close to 6 billion people in the world by now. Uh, uh, if, 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 let's say half of them. If half of them, go, if half of us go to heaven, then everybody will have a square mile to yourself. You're going to own a square mile. Is that enough to plant grapes on? Yeah. <laughs> going to be good. You know. We're not, heaven is a huge place. You got that? Yeah. It's a huge place. Yeah. Now, also, there is a wall around heaven. And if you do the measurements, it's about 216 feet tall. Because you have to remember that heaven is 1,500 miles high. Mm -hmm. So a wall that's 216 feet tall is not going to look very high, is it? No. But there is a wall around that city. The, the third thing is this, is the beauty of this city. And I don't know how to illustrate this because... I can't imagine it. No. But when you read through the colors in verses 18 through 21 uh, of jasper and pure gold, like in the clear ga glass, and, and you go up down through there and you see there is, and I don't have time to go through all these, and I wish I did. Maybe we need to do an in-depth study on the colors of heaven. Maybe that would be a fourth, uh, a, a fourth study. Can you imagine? These are blues. They're greens, they're bluish greens, they're onyx. I mean, can you imagine? I, I can't imagine what heaven looks like. No, yes, not in this one. But we can open that brochure this morning, <laughs> and we can look, yes. if we could just imagine. And it, it, have you ever done this? You, when you went on vacation, you got the brochure, and you looked at it, you looked at it online, and you got there, it wasn't nothing like you said it was. No. But I want to tell you something, this place here is going to be better than the brochure. Amen. It's going to be better than brochure. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful place. Amen. Now, I want you to notice uh, the beauty of the, of the city. Notice what the Bible says here. Every gate, there will be a pearl. Yeah. A pearl of great price. The story in Matthew chapter 13. Yeah. Right? And do you know what the Bible, the Bible said in Matthew chapter 13 is this. And maybe I'll just trend, I, I'm going to go ahead and get into my last point. It's found in verses 22 through 27. Is the worship, I, I put the worship of the city. It's not, we're not going to worship the city. Let me say the worship in the city. Amen. Now notice here. Uh, uh, let, let me tie these two together. The first thing is this. Every gate will be a pearl. Mm -hmm. In Matthew chapter 13, Jesus said there was a man who sold everything he had to buy a pearl of great price. And that pearl is you and I. Yes. Wow. Because, see, the pearl is simply a gem, or whatever you call it, a jewel, 
that was made from an irritating piece of sand. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that would be me. <laughs> and and so, so we're going to be reminded, if we had a memory, it's going to be in honor of us. Yeah. When we walk into that city and we see that pearl, we remember that there was a man who bought a pearl of great price and he gave everything he had for it. Yeah. But also notice this, what the Bible says. As when we walk down those streets, the streets are of pure gold. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine this? And, and notice what it says. It was transparent glass. Now, I don't know what I'm going to look like. I hope I have more hair, and I hope maybe I'm a little taller or something, you know, when I get to heaven. I don't know. But, uh, but whatever I look like, I'm going to be able to see myself. Yeah. And I'm going to know that I'm not the person that I used to be. Praise the Lord. And that's what this is about. Yeah. Is going to heaven. Mm -hmm. There's a change. There's a, there, there's a change. But I want you to notice, and my last point is, the worship in the city. Notice in verse 22. There's no temple there. There's no church. Because the whole thing is a church. Yeah. You see that in verse 22? I saw no temple there yet. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the hey, temple Lord. Lord. Hey, So it's the object. We know what the object of the worship is, right? Now remember, I said this week, or last week, I said that uh, we've already spent a thousand years with our loved ones, right? Mm -hmm. So heaven is not going to be about our loved ones. So we always say, I can't wait to get to heaven to see this. And I know I get that. I'm not, we're not rebuking, we're not going to rebuke ourselves for that. Because yes, it's important, is it not? Mm -hmm. That, that there will be no separation. But at this place, there will be worship. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. can, can, I mean, you, we know what that is, do we not? I mean, have there, been play, have there been times in this building right here where we just felt the presence of God? Yeah. There was a Sunday night here back when we, back when we were normal. <laughs> there wasn't that many people here, was there? Lord. And I think it was Keith and Debbie was singing. Imagine that. <laughs> they were singing a song and there was something that happened in this place right. do you guys remember that mm -hmm. and there was people who got up and started coming to the altar and yeah. I'm looking around like I mean I could feel it I knew what it was Praise the Lord. but we felt the presence of God Amen. For, for that time for that moment can you imagine feeling that for eternity being in the presence of God. Hey, my and, and so this scripture is telling us this. The worship in the city will be of God. It will be corporate worship. Right? There's a song that I heard this morning. And I wrote down. I'm not going to sing it for you. But uh, <laughs> I did write down uh, one line. Thank you. I know. And uh, the, 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 the name of the song is. You made a way. And it goes like this. It says. You, uh, when it looks like we can't win. You put your arms around us and brought us in. Yeah. Is that not what heaven's going to be? Listen, we don't get heaven. To, well, we do too. Yeah, you know, a year ago when we were, uh, my big ears are not holding this thing on very good this morning. Uh, and I just lost part, part of it. We did not, I, I, we just say things. In preaching. I mean, you know, we say things like, and I've already said this morning, there'll be no peace until the Prince of Peace is sitting on his throne. We, you know, I, I mean, I'm not the first person to say that. That's been said throughout years. That's a church thing. Yeah. But today, do you believe that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the things that we're seeing in the news and we'll see this week. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is, there's no way that, that, you know, back in the day that, uh, you know, I said, well, I can't wait to go to heaven. In back of my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, but I've got things I'm going to do here. Yeah. Well, you know, we're coming to a place where it ain't going to happen here. Lord. It's not going to get better. Mm. It's going to get worse. Yeah. But, the, but the, 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 the thing about heaven is this. The characteristic of heaven is simply this. Is yes, there, was a, there is a time right now. There's a time right this moment in our society. It doesn't look like we're going to win. It doesn't look like the nation of Israel is going to survive. When, uh, we've not went into that in depth study, but when you look at the battle of Armageddon and the battles with Israel, it doesn't look like they're going to make it. But guess what happens? Yeah. God intervenes. Amen. And, and when we go, as we go through life, 
in the coming days, it's going to look like we're not going to make it. And we're going to make it. Praise the Lord. Because yeah. we know what this book says at the end. Amen. So when, when, we, when we see that, and all of a sudden we're standing before the one that took us in, Lord. don't you think there's going to be some worship? Yes. Lord, thank you. Yes. Lord, you made a way when there was no way. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's going to be the worship. Hey, are you going with us? But we'd be sure we'd be good. I know what you're doing. I know you've got things in your life. You're on drugs. You're on alcohol. You're drinking alcohol. I mean, I know all those things. It's nothing new. But you're going to have to make a decision today where you're going to spend Amen. eternity. Yeah. And today is the day of salvation. It doesn't matter what you've done wrong. It doesn't matter. Because God will forgive you. He will save your soul. And he will give you eternal life. Amen. But you're going to have to make a choice today. Amen. The Bible says this, that he stands on the door and knocks. And your decision is this, do I open the door and allow him into my heart or don't I? Yeah. But just know that your decision is dependent on where you spend eternity. Amen. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that you died for my sins on that cross. And I asked you to come into my heart and save me. And mean it. And he'll come into your heart and save you today and give you eternal life. Let me pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for this place called heaven. And, Lord, as we read about it and talk about it, we still don't comprehend. But, but Lord, we do know that, uh, that if you made it, it has to be good. So we know that we're excited. So, Lord, I do pray for the one that does not know you as a personal Savior. I pray you just take this word, this message, and maybe take it and use it uh, for your honor and your glory to bring them to you. So I pray, Lord, for the one that that is just discouraged today, is dealing with something that maybe they can't handle. I pray, Lord, that you just uh, uh, speak a message of hope and just let people know that there is a better time, there's a better place, that we just have to keep going. So thank you, Lord, for just all you do. Thank you, Lord, for this time this morning that we've been in your word and, and uh, amongst your singing and just in your house this morning. So have your way in the invitation as the invitation goes out uh, on Facebook Live and YouTube. I pray, Lord, if there's someone out there that's listening and needs to accept you, I pray, Lord, this would be the day of salvation. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. If you'll stand this morning, we're going to sing a